Welcome to the first season of the Ecologies of Danger podcast. Ecologies of Danger is a project produced by the students of a course on environmental security at Colgate University. In this season of the podcast, we look at the different ways in which the environment has become a security issue. In this episode, Matt Donnelly discusses whether there really is a new Cold War brewing amid the Arctic's melting ice. As a result, the race for resources on top of the world is heating up. The heat has created some geopolitical friction, too, with Russia and America eyeing each other warily. Well, right now, a new Cold War of sorts is brewing, this one over icebreakers in the Arctic. Yeah, and John, that imbalance has some worried that the U.S. is falling so far behind Russia and even China now that it poses a national security threat. A 21st century Cold War in the frozen waters. What you just heard are pieces of news reports from all over the world on a topic that seems to be gripping everyone's attention. Melting ice in the Arctic has opened the region's natural resources to exploration. But if we take a closer look, it seems like the potential for conflict in the Arctic is more of a media exaggeration than anything else. Let me debunk some of these myths and clear up some of these claims being made by the media. But first, let's hear a clip from a reporter on what is happening in the Arctic. Now in recent years, melting ice caps have given way to shipping routes and the exploration of resources at the bottom of the world's smallest ocean. Approximately 30% of the world's undiscovered natural gas and 15% of its oil lie in the Arctic. But the majority of those riches remain offshore. Russia, the U.S., Norway, Denmark and Canada border the Arctic and have sovereign rights to resources within 200 nautical miles of their territorial waterways. Let me unpack what RT's Marina Portnaya just told us. Global temperature rise has led to ice melting in the Arctic. With this ice no longer present, the ability to extract resources like oil and gas is becoming more feasible. This is all true. Academic journals and reports all confirm that these resources are there. The melting ice, though, isn't the only thing that has allowed for more exploration. Improvements in technology over the last few years have also led to the ability to explore. This is because of one main technology, icebreakers. Icebreakers are vessels used to, well, break through ice. You heard the media making claims about the new Cold War. So let's see where these two countries stand with Arctic capabilities and interest in the region. Here's President Obama. Icebreakers. Operationally, we really only have two. Uh, To contrast, Russia has about 40. So here's where we start to see some more potential for conflict. The U.S. and Russia are two of about five nations who border the Arctic. Russia is building up some of their capabilities where, according to President Obama and the icebreakers, the U.S. has not. Sound familiar to the Cold War arms race? The media certainly thinks so. It's common to see Cold War attached to Arctic in news headlines. And this may be for good reason, or it may just be to grab the attention of viewers. Building up militaries and trying to advance technologically is certainly reminiscent of the Cold War. The extent to which this is happening in the Arctic is unclear. Most experts argue that we are not at the point of a Cold War. They also believe the most alarmist scenario is that the stage is merely being set for a Cold War. When trying to see if a Cold War is brewing, it's important to look at the individual countries and what they are doing. There certainly is some militarizing taking place. RT's Marina Portnaya gives us more. A military race is building up in the region. The U.S. Navy recently debuted a revised roadmap focused on expanding America's muscle on the world's smallest ocean over the next decade. Of course, Russia wouldn't miss the opportunity to sharpen its spears as well. Not to be left out, Russia last month dispatched four strategic bombers to patrol over the Arctic. Moscow has been calling for tighter security along the country's Arctic frontiers and along its maritime transportation routes in the polar region. Further research suggests that Russia is most committed to resource extraction in the Arctic, and they are rather vocal about it. 
Here's author Bob Reese appearing on NBC News explaining how the potential for a Cold War is developing. The Russian military has identified the Arctic as a probable place for war in the coming century over resources. They had immense war games in May, and when the Russians have a war game, well, who's the opponent? The opponent is NATO, so the opponent is us. Building up militaries or technologies is certainly reminiscent of the Cold War. But is that what is actually happening here? Most experts would argue, no, we're not nearly at the stage of a Cold War. Simply put, a lot more needs to happen in order for the potential for conflict to become a reality. This includes better technology and overall increased interest in shipping routes and resources, more ice to melt, and as Emily Stromquist, senior analyst for the Eurasia Group, describes, the price of oil needs to rise. This is because drilling for the resources in these waters and the technology associated with it are extremely expensive. In this current oil price environment, it's really not very feasible. Uh, and, and this is really a, a combination of both the kinds of technologies that are required and also just the, the break-even costs of developing these projects. So the academic community and the experts are saying don't worry about the Arctic. But the media community is saying that we're on the brink of a Cold War. It's no secret that media outlets try and gain your attention with catchy headlines. So is that what's happening here? Yes, to a certain extent. Take this Wall Street Journal headline, for example. Russia's military sophistication in the Arctic echoes of the Cold War. Alarming, right? Well, the article itself actually says the dangers of the Arctic is nowhere near that of a Cold War. So in some instances, we clearly see the media doing, well, media things. But the media doesn't cover some of the potential positives that could occur from melting ice in the Arctic, including faster trade routes or bringing jobs to poor regions. The New York Times was one of the few to report on this. They interviewed citizens from a community in Greenland who claimed that the melting ice could prove to be an economic opportunity. They go on to report that mining for valuable rocks could add many jobs to a community that could use them. So the next time you hear or see a headline screaming about a Cold War in the Arctic, remember, it's probably not going to happen. Not only is the break-even point for drilling too low right now, but the United States simply is not that interested in these resources. Russia is largely dominating the region, with more technology, and the United States does not seem that concerned. Well, at least for now. Looking at the future, it's understandable as to why there may be some uneasy feelings regarding the region. Take, for example, our new president. President Trump has proven to be a reactionary president easily tempered by threats. So, one could see the Arctic becoming a point of conflict in the future. And we all know how Trump's Twitter fingers are always on the brink of starting a war. But remember, for now, headlines involving Cold War in the Arctic are just that. They're headlines. And there should be no reason for thinking that they are anything more. With Colgate University, this is Matt Donnelly.